When measuring snow, a lot can go wrong, because, let's face it, conditions are not always ideal for measuring. In this video, we will touch on a variety of situations that can throw a curveball to even our most experienced observers. We will explore tips on measuring snow depth, what happens when snow melts and settles, how to deal with an icy gauge, what to do if your gauge overflows with snow, and how to handle extreme snowpack. Let's start with taking depth measurements with your snow stick or ruler. This could be your snowfall measurement, the depth of snow that has fallen in the last 24 hours, or your snowpack measurement, the depth of accumulated snow that is on the ground at your observation time. When taking these measurements, you may find that you have to take multiple measurements in representative locations that aren't on your snow measurement board. To take an accurate measurement, make sure that you are measuring on a hard surface. Even though your yard may be hard, measuring where there is grass will most often offset your measurement because the grass creates a gap between the snow and the ground that can increase your measurement, sometimes by inches. Some volunteers have solved this by using two snow measurement boards. One gets put on the top of the snow after every daily measurement, and the other stays buried, so there is always a hard surface to take measurements on. Just remember, when you are measuring snow depth, to use a board or hard surface. Don't measure inside your gauge. As you know, after snow accumulates, it will eventually start melting and settling. It is important to realize that when it does this, the measurement for snow depth that you take with your ruler may be decreasing, but the liquid water equivalent may almost be the same. The snow acts like a sponge, soaking up water that melts around the pack. Snow often gets to a density of nearly one inch of water for three inches of compacted snow before it actually begins releasing water into the soil or runoff. This goes against the myth that 10 inches of snow equals one inch of liquid. It also makes the measurements for the liquid water equivalent all the more important to hydrologists and river forecasters. Differences in temperature and snow crystal types can result in many different kinds of snow, heavy wet snow, light fluffy snow, etc. And these can drastically change the amount of water that is contained in accumulation. Here is something else to consider about the subtleties of snow when measuring. Most of us know that snow can melt into water, and water when evaporated turns into gas. But what about snow turning straight into gas? It is called sublimation, and it's a real phenomenon. This can also affect the liquid water equivalent of snow. It doesn't happen often, but sometimes you may find that ice has formed in and around your gauge. How do you measure daily precipitation? First, bring your ice glazed rain gauge inside where you can then measure the liquid amount once it thaws. Remember, you're just measuring what fell inside the gauge, not outside. So make sure to wipe the excess moisture off with a dry towel before you measure. Record your measurement in the daily precipitation section of the report form. You can also measure ice accretion, the ice that sometimes forms over everything in this situation. To learn how, check out our Measuring Freezing Rain and Ice Accretion video on our website. Sometimes you will find that the snow is filling to the top of the gauge and spilling out. If you are around when the gauge starts filling up, either take an early sample and put the gauge out to keep collecting without spilling over, or compact the snow inside the cylinder to make more room for accumulation. Your inner measuring cylinder works good for this. If you aren't around when the gauge overflows and you suspect that some water may have been missed, go ahead and take a core sample for your measurement. This may have happened to you. You go to take a snow core sample when you have more than a foot of snow on the ground. The outer cylinder of your gauge is only a foot tall. What to do? Well, if it's not much more than a foot, say about 15 inches, you can often push the outer cylinder down towards your snow measurement board and compress the snow into the gauge. However, if it is any deeper, you may have to use another method. Dig a trench down into the snow all the way to your measuring surface. Starting from the top of the snow, press your outer cylinder down the full height of the cylinder, 12 inches. Take your snow swatter or spatula and slide it in the side of the trench right at the opening of your gauge. Now you can pick up the captured snow and put it in a bigger receptacle. But this is very important. Before you do, make sure to wipe down the sides of the gauge with a dry towel. You don't want any extra moisture falling into your measurement. Now repeat the process until you get all the way down to your measuring surface. Melt or weigh the snow you collected to get your measurement. Here's a good tip. If you weigh the snow to measure, 
You can pre-weigh your collection receptacle and subtract it from the total weight just as you've done with the outer cylinder for your other measurements. Watch the Weighing Your Measurement video if you need a refresher. When in doubt, or even if you are certain, be sure to make use of the observation notes section on your report form. A well-articulated note can really help put your measurement into context. The best way to learn from these difficult situations is by doing. Experience is the best teacher, and it can help you to achieve higher quality and more accurate measurements. Not only does that benefit you, but it also benefits the people that depend on the data. So strive to measure consistently and accurately. And if you ever have a question, know that we are just an email away, and we will do our very best to help.